we got a couple hours until Indiana plays tonight. And I thought instead of putting up a new live Inside Indiana Sports Now with Kent Sterling, I'd put up part of what Dan Dockich and I did today, Two Big Brains. We do it twice a week. It's really, really fun. It's about 45 minutes long. This isn't going to be a 45-minute clip, obviously, but it's on another channel. So it's not going to be on this channel. The channel is called Two Big Brains, and I'll put the link in the description and you can find it. But I wanted to share with you what that is because it's a little bit different and it's really, really fun. We have a good time talking about sports. I think you'll have a good time watching it. And then at 9.55 tonight, we're going to have a great time watching Indiana kick the living hell out of Dunderhead Rob Senderoff and the Kent State Golden Flashes. I can't wait to see that. I can't wait to see Kent State's season end tonight. And Rob Senderoff go home in tears. Anyway, here's Dan Dockich and I from a little bit earlier today celebrating St. Patrick's Day, talking about sports. Man. Let me ask you about the defense that Indiana played toward the end of the game against Michigan, where they just, they put up a wall, did not allow penetration, and so they couldn't get south and start kicking it to Dickinson. Why don't they do this all the time? And wouldn't this be a good thing to do tonight against a team like Kent State? that likes putting yes. it on the, on the floor and getting to the rack. Absolutely. You know, when you're bigger than somebody, so here's the camera. If I'm taller, then I can give a little more room. Right. I can, get, I can put you at arm's length a little bit, and, and Indiana's going to be bigger. All right, here's what has to happen in that vein. First, I got to square my shoulders to the shoot, to the driver. You know, it used to be you turned, you wanted to force everybody to the baseline. Well, guys are pretty good with the ball now. If they get past you even a little bit, they'll duck underneath. So I got to square my shoulders. That's number one. Number two is you as the guy next to me. So yeah. we call it one pass away. I got the ball. There's a guy. He's one pass away. Two passes away would be if I'm on the top of the key, me throwing it to the corner. That's two passes away. One pass. When you're one pass away from a dribbler, you've got to be immediately in help side. So it's only one move. Because the recovery is quick. It's it. Right. I don't have to come here and then there. I'm already here, which visually slows down the driver. So he sees me here. All right. Then when I kick it, I don't have to help and then recover. I just got to recover. And that is huge. So if you're watching the game tonight, yeah, don't watch the ball. When when, when uh, Kent has the ball, watch the guys next to the driver and see what's happening. Yeah. Now, how do you beat that? If you're Kent, I'll tell you how you beat that. You get some movement. You cross the floor. You don't stand, boom, 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 four guys around one. That's not how they play, which is, which is good for Kent. You move guys because it puts me as a defender and you as a defender in a different position than just being in hell. And Indiana will get lost on defense. Oh, Indiana does two things. I'll tell you the worst. Frickin' Iowa. Does Iowa not practice closing out on a shooter? I'm looking at you, yeah. Franny. Like what we don't we don't get up in I mean, they were so late yesterday. Yeah. And India, you can't be late today. Yeah. You, if you're Indiana, you cannot be late. I'll tell you what else. You can't be late if you're Purdue. You cannot be late. Because what are little guys gonna do against you? They're gonna make shots if if they get going. So if you're late, use your length, get there early, run them off the three point line. If you're Purdue, where are they running them into? Bigger guys, easy. Don't worry about it. And Fairly Dickinson's got nothing to lose, and nothing to lose, no expectations. That's a pretty comfortable place to be. It, it, and the, you mentioned the word comfortable. All right? I always say this. You can get hot defensively. Like People think hot in basketball is making jump shots. Uh -uh. Yeah. You can get to where I know you're not doing shit against me. I got you. You can't. You, you know. And what happens then is the offense gets a little sped up, and then a shot that looks open to the crowd yeah. is uncomfortable. You use what kind of is uncomfortable. So Indiana and Purdue, the, Purdue just needs to say, look, great, great year. You didn't win your league, uh, Fairly Dickinson. You only got in because Merrimack wasn't eligible, but it's time to go. <laughs> <laughs> you said on your KentSterling.com, which, by the way, is the best sports talk in the world, yeah, in the city. Nice. It is. You said this, and nobody else in the city could think this way. You said Chris Ballard is signing players like he was 12-4 and four, as opposed to being 4-12 or whatever the hell the record yeah. was. E elaborate. He's, he's acting like he's won something. He's going out and getting depth pieces at defensive tackle and at edge rather than addressing the glaring needs of his team like they don't exist. It's like, oh, no, the wide receiver room is fine. 
We've got no problems. Our starting 22, I would stack up against anybody else's starting 22, despite the fact they're 4, 12, and 1. That's insanity. He is piloting the ship as though the, the ship is on calm waters coming into the port uh, triumphant. They're going to have a parade for him. And no, like this team's in deep trouble. You got offensive line problems. You got linebacker problems. You got defensive back problems. You have one real quarterback on the roster. You have two real wide receivers on the roster and neither of them are dynamic. What, and you got a guy coming off a high ankle who, who's your only dynamic offensive player. And you're again, using this word, your only dynamic defensive player has back issues, nerve problems, and you don't know whether he's ever gonna be able to play again. This is craziness to me. And if, if, if I would give him a pass, as we have in the past, <laughs> if this wasn't year seven. Yes! This is seven years of doing the same shit and calling it somehow a winning formula. I don't know how the meetings on 56th Street, how they don't end with, like Jim Ursay, either enraged or like that. I don't, I don't know what's going on over there. Uh, Paris Campbell and Matt Ryan both out. Ashton Doolin, though. He's back. <laughs> mm. And EJ Speed, who I like. I, I like too. EJ Speed. I do, too. And I think he's got a great name for a linebacker uh, or a superhero. Here's what you don't do if you're putting together an NFL roster. You don't overpay for mediocrity. Same thing in baseball. Like, I remember when the Cardinals won the World Series in 2011. They had 10 guys who were making above the minimum. Then they had 15 guys under a million dollars. That's how you put together a roster. You, or you're willing to overpay for greatness. Everybody else gets the minimum. And that's it. But they keep paying guys $4.5 million a year, and I don't know why. To me, when you look at the NFL, and we've talked about this, and we'll, I'm never stopping talking about this, I got to look at weapons. That's what I look at. Yes. I, okay, so they signed the, the, the pass rusher, but last year they signed Ngakwe, and I tried to tell you he runs past the quarterback because that's what Mike Lombardi told me, and Griggs and he wasn't wrong. Yeah. All right, so fine, you got a pass rusher, that's great, but. Five sacks last year, that's your pass rusher. Okay. I, I was, that's yeah, what right. I'm saying, but that's yep. okay. All right, now, no Paris Campbell. Right, which is fine because he's been hurt. Goodbye. But I mean, here's the he's deal, a though. Guy. Here's the deal: who are you replacing him with? Yeah, I mean, whenever we want somebody gone, you got to replace. Him. Like, I don't want Matt Ryan here. Okay, here's Gardner Minshew. There's your replacement. I mean, whether he starts or not, he's the replacement for Matt Ryan. It's All right, I'll give you a gambling tip. Yeah. All right, those of you, this hit uh, in mine. It hit nine out of ten. I got this from a, quote, secret society, true story, of big money gamblers here in Indianapolis. Are they all Masons? Are they <laughs> Free Masons? Masons? Yeah. <laughs> all right. You're watching the game. <laughs> it gets the halftime. Bet the under for the game. Not the under for the second half. For the game. So I'm not saying bet, okay, second half over under is 75. No. The number for the game, which is going to be from 120 to 150. That's what you bet. Yeah. Uh, seven and two yesterday, nine and one Wednesday. And I uh, know of a guy who had 50 grand on one of the games yesterday. That's how confident people are in that. Wow. Yeah. That guy was not me, ladies and gentlemen. So at halftime, you bet the adjusted under, the over under to the under. Yeah. Uh, Iowa, I knew not to do that with Iowa. I, I, I lost that one. I forget the other one I lost. And I'll tell you something else. Unless you're betting stupid, which I really don't bet stupid. I don't bet a lot of money. It's really kind of fun. Particularly, like, Indiana don't do it because you're rooting for Indiana. And you right, want the other right. team to score, right? I don't need a stake in the game to make me interested yeah. in Indiana, yeah. obviously. Yeah, you're just watching two teams score. Right. Is that the expectations for this team, mediocrity at best. And last year, like, hey, the Titans are going to take a step back. The Jaguars still suck. You know, Houston's, Houston's a train awful. wreck. This is, this is a coronation. It's not a season, and it's not. And this year's not going to be. And I don't understand how it gets better before it gets worse. I don't think it will. I know how it does. Lamar Jackson. <laughs> I'm starting to come around a Are little you? bit. Well, no. 
But <laughs> like the, the present value of Lamar Jackson is so much better than what the Colts have right now. But the future value. Who's 26? You're the, talking injury. I'm talking both injury, giving up $50 million a year-ish guaranteed for five years and two first round picks that are what, no, one is number four. We know what that one is. Next year, even with Lamar Jackson, do you think that this roster is ready to win 10 games? I, I will tell you, I think it's a hell of a lot more ready. With Lamar Jackson? I don't think, yeah. I don't think Houston's any better. I don't, I don't like what I see if I'm a Titans fan. I right. mean, we can all talk about Jacksonville, but I don't. I mean, Jacksonville's fine. I don't have their schedule here in front of me. Well, as we get closer to the season, we'll do it. I, look, in my opinion, I want hope. Yeah. And hope could be C.J. Stroud. Hope could be Anthony Richardson. But I think you're stretching that hope. Here's where the problem is, and it can only be solved with Lamar Jackson, is if you start stacking up the uh, quarterbacks in the AFC and you say, okay, Mahomes, Burrow, Herbert, Lawrence, Allen, Allen, right? Rogers, Rogers, right? Jackson. There's seven. If he goes back to the Burrow. Ravens, and you're not, you're not going to penetrate that seven with anybody but Lamar Jackson. So how do you even pretend to be competitive within the AFC? So Burrow's in there. I don't know. You know, if Sean Payton is the whisper, he's got Russell Wilson. I don't know what's going to happen there. But all I know is this: the Colts are not close. No to whatever the bottom guy that you want to make. Let's take Wilson out because he was awful. But if you're going to take, okay, who's the worst guy? Let's say it's Lamar Jackson in this grouping with Burrow and, and Herbert right. and Allen and Mahomes. And, well, okay. They're not close to the bottom no. guy. Right. And it ain't like, well, you know, we got this defense that's just going to come yeah. at you. Really? Okay. <laughs> when, <laughs> when you have bad face – Bad face don't go away. Yeah. Bad face, like Vin Vinatieri had tough face. Vinatieri was out killing big stuff. Now nah, he got old, right? All right, but he had good face. Peyton Manning could look at you and crush your soul. That's good face. Yeah. Michael Badgley got bad face. It looks like my uh, my accountant. I don't need an accountant kicking. I need a guy <laughs> that's going out and killing stuff. I got to get this before we, we wrap. I got to yeah. get some predictions from you on games today. Okay. All right, Purdue, first, would you take the 23? Or give the I 23. Think, uh, yeah, I'd give the 20. I'd take Purdue. They're going to cover. Would you take Indiana uh, given four and a half? <laughs> yes, because you know what? I'm not going to be the guy with bad face. Don't be I'm bad not face. Gonna, I'm not going to sit here with an IU logo on my chest and say, no, um, I believe that Indiana is in trouble. I cannot believe, I cannot fathom for a second that Indiana is going to lose to Rob Senderoff, the Dunderhead, and the Golden Flashes at Kent State, I can't believe it. Well said. I would take Indiana minus 100 because I'm not taking freaking Rob Sender off in this freaking game. I'll tell you that right now. VC. That's two big brains. So it's going to be at the channel at, twice a week, and all the episodes are at this channel. Uh, the channel is in the description of this video, so you can go there and you can consume the entire thing if you're of a mind to. I think you will. I think you'll enjoy it. We enjoy doing it. And I think that's half the battle. We'll talk to you after Indiana kicks the living hell out of Rob Senderoff tonight. I can't wait to talk to you about what Indiana does to that quivering wretch of a coach.